Um, my name is um, Brian Williams. I'm Chair of Medicine at UCL in London, uh, and I was also Chair of the uh, European Hypertension Guidelines and uh, a member of the Guideline Committee for the International Society of Hypertension Guidelines. And what I'm going to do now is really review the differences and similarities between these two guidelines in Europe and internationally. This slide shows the comparison between the two guidelines. And let's focus first on the target population. The focus of the European guideline, and indeed both guidelines, is on optimal care when possible. However, an important distinction of the international guideline is the recognition that optimal care will not always be possible in low resource settings or in settings where there is no comprehensive healthcare cover. And so the guideline has speci uh, specified essential care requirements. Now, the classification of blood pressure is based on office blood pressure in both guidelines as it is around the world. And this is based on a diagnosis of hypertension when blood pressure is more than 140 over 90. The diagnosis of hypertension is similar in both guidelines for optimal care. And that is, screening would be based on office blood pressure, and if blood pressure is elevated, the, the elevation in blood pressure and diagnosis of hypertension should be confirmed by ADPM, home blood pressure, or repeated office blood pressure measurements. Now, the essential requirement for low resource settings in the ISH guideline is to use office blood pressure throughout to uh, both diagnose and monitor uh, blood pressure with the use of ADPM or home blood pressure, if possible, in these settings to confirm the diagnosis of hypertension. Cardiovascular risk assessment forms an important part of the management of hypertension, and both guidelines for, recommend the use of a cardiovascular risk assessment tool to aid the assessment of risk. In Europe, the SCORE program is specified for risk assessment, whereas in the international guideline, risk assessment can be based on any available risk assessment tool according to different regions of the world. Now, in terms of drug treatment, <coughs> This is recommended along with lifestyle intervention in both guidelines when there is grade two hypertension or when there is grade one hypertension and high risk categorization, usually due to the presence of comorbid diseases or target organ damage. These patients should receive immediate treatment and lifestyle intervention. In the optimal care group in both guidelines, grade one hypertension at low risk should be monitored with lifestyle intervention for three to six months and then treatment initiated if blood pressure isn't controlled. And this is the same for both guidelines. In terms of the ISH guideline, they also specify that in essential care settings, in other words, in low resource settings, where this may not be possible, the focus should be on ensuring people with grade two hypertension are treated or high risk grade one if the resources are limited. Now, lifestyle intervention differs very little in any guideline across the world. All of these guidelines emphasize its importance to complement treatment or try and delay treatment in people with borderline hypertension and reduce risk. And all of the guidelines recommend similar interventions. In the ISH guideline, there is one or two additional interventions for optimal care, and they are uh, avoiding stress reduction, and indeed avoiding air pollution, the latter potentially being very important in certain settings. Now, in terms of drug treatment, um, both guidelines for optimal care recommend initiating therapy in most patients with two drugs, ideally as a single pill combination. As the combinations in Europe are either an ACE or an ARB with a CCB or diuretic, and in the optimal care arm of the ISH guideline, the combination preferred is an ACE or an ARM with a CCB, or indeed the option of using a CCB and a diuretic in people of black African origin. Uh, in the essential arm of the ISH treatment guideline, it's recognized that all of these drugs may not be available as prescribed for optimal care, and that the recommendation is if they're not available, any drug that has been shown to safely lower blood pressure should be considered to achieve that objective. Now, in terms of further drug treatment for people who do not respond to treatment with initial therapy with two drugs, 
Um, the guidelines are quite similar, recommending a ACE or an ARB with a CCB and diuretic as a combination, ideally as a single pill combination for optimal care if available. And then adding further diuretic, usually spironolactone or other drugs in patients with four drug requirement, i.e. resistant hypertension. And once again, for the ISH guideline, the essential component is to ensure that people are treated with any available drug if those optimal treatment options are not available to use. Now, finally, I turn to treatment targets. This is an important area, and both guidelines recommend lowering blood pressure below 140 over 90 as the initial objective, and then aiming to get blood pressure down to 130 over 80 or lower. In the European guideline, they recommend considering going lower than 130 over 80 in younger patients who will tolerate a lower blood pressure and down to 130 over 80 in older patients if they tolerate that level of pressure. In the international guideline, they recommend getting down to 130 over 80 as optimal care or lower. Um, in all patients, again, individualizing treatment as necessary in older patients because they may not tolerate these low levels of pressure. And in terms of the essential recommendation in the ISH guideline, it's to reduce blood pressure by at least 20 millimeters of mercury if possible, and aim in all patients if possible to get blood pressure below 140 over 90, again, based on considerations of tolerability and frailty. Both guidelines emphasize the importance of monitoring therapy, following up patients, trying to ensure blood pressure is controlled quickly within three months and monitoring for side effects of therapy, particularly with these lower targets and checking adherence to ensure blood pressure is controlled, particularly in patients where blood pressure control is not optimal. And that's the same for both guidelines. Finally, the European guideline places a great emphasis on recommendations around uh, concomitant drug treatment for risk management, notably the delivery of statins to all patients at high or very high risk and consideration of statins for patients even at low to moderate risk with hypertension and the use of antiplatelet therapy, usually aspirin in low dose for those for secondary prevention. The actual guideline from the international guideline doesn't contain a specific recommendation on concomitant cardiovascular disease risk management, but surely uh, would indeed uh, endorse the recommendations of many other guidelines in this area as well. Thank you very much for your attention.